Oh man, so we've been talking a lot about the idea of smartphones and specs and spec lists and if that's the whole story around a particular smartphone or smartphone launch and uh, this particular device, well this one takes a spec approach as far as just smashing everything onto the spec sheet. So much so that after taking a glance at it, I was thinking, man, that might be the fastest, that might be the most powerful smartphone in 2020. This is the ROG Phone 3, and I'm telling you right now, they put everything in it. Uh, what about a little Snapdragon 865 Plus, the first processor to clock over three gigahertz in a smartphone? 10% improvement, performance improvement over the regular Snapdragon 865, which is also already flagship level. What about a 144 hertz display? Yeah, we're gonna put that in there as well. Oh, uh, how about 16 gigs of RAM in a phone? Oh, jeez, it's difficult. They put 16 gigs of RAM. I mean, you don't have to get it with 16 gigs, but they're selling a 16 gigabyte RAM version of this smartphone. Oh, and by the way, 512 gigs of storage. They packed it all into here. It's wild. You have a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. Look, we're gonna go over it. We're gonna find out. I have a few of the accessories over here, but it looks like it's the cases and the cooler, which if you guys watched my previous video on the ROG phone and certain other gaming phones, you know, these things are not a gimmick. They actually do work. The controllers and other peripherals, the dock, I don't have those at the moment, but the uh, box looks very fancy and special. ROG Phone 3, you have the cyborg futuristic look to it. As you can tell, I don't even, it slides. Of course it slides. Ooh. Okay, so the phone is actually over there and this is gonna be the extra things. I'm gonna just, we're gonna chill on that for a second. This one, that lifts there. It's all, it's very magical here. Lift the tab, okay. For those who dare, there's a pre-included case over here. This is a kind of exoskeleton look, gamer aesthetic, as you're aware. It doesn't cover up the design or the LEDs that are on the device, you gotta have some RGB on there as well. So that'll get you started. You've also got your paperwork and a SIM tool, which is even the SIM tool is aggressive. Imagine. Kirk, you never saw a SIM tool aggressive like that. That's Look at aggressive. That. That's like Lambo style angles on that SIM tool. Some stickers. Join the Republic, Republic of Gamers. Increasingly, guys, it's all about the mobile gaming. That's people are expecting more out of their mobile devices when it comes to gaming. And that's really what's taxing these, these heavy spec sheets, uh, particularly because cooling becomes an issue and then uh, long gaming sessions may result in, in a phone kind of down clocking itself in order to deal with increased heat and then you're having worse performance. The idea here with a phone like this and the accessories they come out with is to encourage those extended gaming sessions not having to worry about performance. So I read up a little bit on this power brick. This is a 30 watt fast charger for the 6,000 milliamp hour battery that's in here. And the reason they selected 30 watts as opposed to something even faster is because it would require a far fatter phone. And so they had to make a selection between either a bigger battery that would charge at 30 watts or a smaller battery that, that, that could charge faster. And so they went for the bigger battery, which I think is a good choice in a device like this. 6,000 milliamp hours, that's no joke. These are some little plug looking things for your accessory ports in case you wanna have them sealed off. This looks like some sort of a braided cable. I believe it's a type C. Type C to type C, a fairly robust cable. Another thing you'd wanna see on a smartphone targeted at being plugged in some of the time for that really intense gaming. This is a type C to mini jack connector for connecting a headset. The phone over here. Now this, this is a bit of a beast as I'm sure you're aware. And that probably meets your uh, expectation if you've been paying any attention to the gaming segment of smartphones, powerhouse style smartphones. Uh, this has some weight to it. It's very metallic, very cyborg as mentioned. Ooh. 
So the rear reveals this logo in the center, the Republic of Gamers logo, and that is gonna light up. That's gonna be RGB. And we have some other distinctive characteristics. This section over here, depending on the way you bend it, you get some different colored reflections. It says aerodynamic system there, Republic of Gamers written below. Here's your camera module up top. Looks like you have a couple of cameras on there as well as a flash, all very angular in design. Uh, over on the side here, we have ROG engraved into the device. Is that right? Did that say? It is ROG, and I think those are also your shoulder buttons. These are gonna be capacitive shoulder buttons, air triggers are what they call them, and those are a differentiating characteristic of a gaming phone. You can map those to any spot in your game and get a way comfier grip over long periods of time. And these triggers on this device, they actually added functionality. You can split them in half. So you can actually have one button over here and one button over here on each side. So you can get even more functionality. You can swipe on them now. It's a lot of stuff going on. Now, another unique feature is the ability to plug in your peripherals, your cables, and your other attachments on the uh, side of the device as opposed to just on the bottom. Now that's a key because obviously, you know, you, when you're playing a game, you're in landscape mode for the most part, and you could have the cable interfering with your grip. But also, there's various docks that uh, they're gonna put out as accessories to this device that you may want to dock into, and so you have just the versatility of that port on the other side. Ooh, look at that. Qualcomm logo, Elite Gaming. So Qualcomm saying, hey, this is our top tier uh, processor. This is our 865 plus. I think this is the first place it's actually been. We got a unique welcome graphic as well. This is not your stock Android situation. So for unlocking the phone, we have some options here for face recognition as well as in display fingerprint. Oh, so you can use the air triggers for a squeeze function as well. Ah. And here you can see it's set to somewhere in the middle and then that gives you an idea of how hard you have to squeeze to trigger that. Couple of different system styles for you to choose from. This is the Zen UI that comes on a variety of their devices. The default mode is an ROG specific, more aggressive gaming mode. I think that's what most people are gonna choose if you purchase a device like this. ROG Elite desperately needs you to join the resistance mission immediately. All right, so the device is booted up and oh my goodness gracious, this, uh, 144 refresh and it looks like the animation oh my god that's fast that is silky smooth my goodness that is fast so the touch latency is now down to a record low 25 milliseconds with a 270 hertz touch sampling rate so you have a couple of different refresh rates to keep in mind there's the 144 hertz plus the 270 hertz on the touch input uh, all you need to really know is this means you're going to have a very fluid experience and, and for the touch input, your touch is going to be registered rapidly and fluidly. So you can see there's a bit of a skin on here. They've also got a dedicated gaming section called the Armory Crate. And this is where your games are gonna live. This is also where you're gonna be able to see the performance of your device. The temperature, the system frequency, the GPU, CPU, how much memory you're using. And this thing, obviously, as I mentioned, 16 gigs of RAM, so you can keep a lot of things loaded in the background. You just have a bigger RAM buffer there, obviously. Now, one thing you'll probably notice about the device immediately is the fact that it's not attempting to be one of these aggressive screen to body ratio phones. You'll notice it's just, I mean, you have a forehead and chin and that may remind you of a smartphone, a kind of antiquated look to it. A smartphone with an antiquated look, but they went out of their way in a press document to suggest that this was thought through and they decided instead that the front facing speakers and the, and the speaker performance and the overall scale of the battery was more important then stretching the display as far as possible to each edge. So you have two front facing speakers left and right, which are gonna be difficult to block with your hands when you're in a gaming orientation. And you also have a front facing camera, which the same thing, they put it up above where your thumb would rest. So again, we're, we're having to rethink which designs make the most sense given 
the way that the phone is targeted and who it's targeted at. If it's for gaming, then yeah, these things make sense. You want good sound and also you want a place to grip onto it so you can kind of understand it. Things that are happening in the world, in the world of technology. So I can't, in the world you see gaming, my hands don't cover the, the audio today, and that's loud. On video is actually a live stream with the new PlayStation 5 controller courtesy of Jeff Keighley and he was given the opportunity uh, not only to have the new that controller, is loud also and I believe there's actually even greater ability to control your audio performance within the settings if I'm not mistaken so there's this thing baked in called audio wizard which will enhance the performance of audio depending on the circumstance and what you're doing on your device so they're saying for gaming, for example, to boost the sound of footsteps, uh, for music, for a more immersive experience, and then of course, just the ability to personalize the and, and configure the sound. Not all manufacturers give you this ability or encourage you to do this, but they've baked it in here. You can see it's currently on the normal setting and it's in game mode. But if I wanted to go in here and tweak this and just you know, boost up the treble or the bass to suit my criteria, I could do that. So I'm just downloading an update on this device. It's a good moment to look over at some of these accessories. So this is the lighting armor case. So I guess this one lights up a little bit. It also looks sort of like a shell style case, similar to the other one, but a little bit more robust. And this, this is one of those ones that pushes light through these little dots on the back. And of course, it leaves room for all of your various cutouts that are necessary. They detected the case, applying the theme. Woo! You pick it up, Kirk. Yeah. So you're getting your typical RGB cycle through there, but even without the case, you get that. Just it's gonna be this kind of smaller logo that's built into the phone. This case just appears to synchronize what's happening there with the exterior, so that's kind of cool. Neon arrow case, that's this one here. This chic case offers protection against bumps and shock damage. I think it's gonna be a lot like the case that was included in the package just in a neon color. And that is quite the look. Kirk, I feel like you could pull this look, you could pull that look off, right? I like it. It reminds me of Lego. <laughs> You're at the family event and you pull this out. You're like, yep, that's Kirk right there. He's still doing it. I would. He's a guy that's still doing it. So that's a, that's the most, that is so neon looking. Holy pop. We don't see this type of transparent plastic as often anymore. But anyway, there's a couple of different options. Now they've also, included an antibacterial glass screen protector. That's a big deal right now, so that's there as well. And then the most interesting of the accessories that I received is this one, which is the cooler. And like I mentioned previously, I've tested these things with an actual thermometer and they do work. They effectively cool down your smartphone actively with by pulling heat away from where the chip lives underneath the rear surface and then uh, uh, dissipating it. And this plugs into that bottom port that I mentioned previously. So this is going to attach into the port like that, and then down like this. When equipped with a fan and, an, and enabling X mode, do you wish to always apply level three performance to achieve the ultimate gaming experience? Yes, of course I do. All right, so now we have Republic of Gamers RGB down here as well. And we have the fan running, which I can feel the cool air pumping out. And what's cool about this attachment is that it offers up pass-throughs on the bottom for a dedicated wired headset, as well as a Type-C connector to keep power flowing through the whole thing, including this accessory. And then the new thing as well is this little kickstand that's on here that opens up like this. and allows you to get a nice little stand to your device, whether you're just watching content or gaming, because now you can back off a little bit with an actual controller. If you want to attach a controller for a more, even more tactile feel, it's just about versatility and different options for how you want to interact with it. Maybe you just want to let it cool down a little bit. Maybe you want to eat your cereal, you know? It's completely up to you, whatever. What kind of, what kind of cereal are you eating? 
Oh man, you know, I jump around a lot. I recently got back into a classic and believe it or not, uh, just regular Cheerios. Mm, honey? No, no, regular what? yellow box Cheerios. You're a psycho. Yeah, recently got back into it. It's not a ton of flavor, but it's a nostalgic thing to it, so. All right, so to showcase what this thing is capable of, I've loaded up a game called Bullet Force because that game is capable of 144 FPS to take advantage of the 144 Hertz. You have to look for titles that support that. And as far as the air triggers are concerned, you just pull over here, grab the triggers and line them up with different sections within the game where they'd be convenient to have. So down the sights is on my left trigger and to actually activate the trigger itself in the graphical overlay, you have the right shoulder button. If I push the right shoulder, boom. Left shoulder, down the sights. Right shoulder, oh, there we go. He's dead, he's dead. And holy moly, the sound is quite immersive here. Oh. Got him! Got him! It's a comeback, 5-3. That's three in a row! <laughs> that doesn't even seem right. I had it, I had the eyes on him as well. I had the eyes on him. I put the eyes first. Okay, I gotta get out of here. Uh, look, what can I say? I mean, this is, it's fun stuff, guys. It's a good time. It's a good time and it's fun stuff and it's it's gaming. It's gaming centric. It's a beast. It's an it's obvious what it's for. You just have to take one glance at it and you know what you're working with. If you're in the market for the most powerful thing that's out there in smartphone land, I don't think you can beat this right now. Quick recap here on spec. 16 gigs of RAM. A Snapdragon 865 Plus with a 10% performance improvement over the regular 865, including in the graphics department. A 6,000 milliamp hour battery because that's what you would want on a high powered gaming phone. A display that's capable of 144 Hertz, making it one of two that I'm aware of that can come up to that speed. And then you pair that with the 270 Hertz input. And it's like, well, it's obvious that you're dealing with if not the most powerful, definitely one of the most powerful smartphones that you can buy in 2020. You know who it's for. It's got the gaming centric design, the RGB stuff, and a wild variety of accessories that you can add to it to enhance the gaming experience even further. I think this is probably the most popular of the add-ons. It really does work and it's quite portable, but they take it a step further with all the controllers and contraptions so even guys like me can get those kills in the first person shooter. Oh, he missed me too. <laughs> <laughs>